Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers plus me, episode 36. I'm Enigmius and today it's it's all about concepts and things that are half done. That's what we're trying to go for here. I'm going to take a brief look at the Atlas, some of the changes that we've made since the last episode, um, basically progressing the build, and then we're going to be focusing our attention on the mining system that we're going to be using with the Atlas, which is a complete departure from anything that we've done up to this point, uh, and it will work, uh, just not today. <laughs> it's, not, it's not quite working yet. So really, the, the main thing that we've done since the last episode is put in most of the plumbing. We've got the conveyors and everything set up so that we can run uh, basically whatever we need from cargo containers into machines and then back to cargo containers. It's, it's pretty straightforward. We've got conveyor sorters set up on our refineries. Of course, you can see here we haven't set up the, uh, the input yet. All we've got so far is the output. But we've got conveyor sorters set up on the refineries so that we can pull specific resources, um, ores, for example, from storage into the refineries, refine them, and then send the ingots back out to storage in a very specific kind of one-way valve sort of configuration so that we don't get things lost in transit, we don't get things stuffed in places where they don't necessarily belong. So that's been a big focus for this whole thing is make it as simple as possible but at the same time make it as foolproof as possible so things go where they're needed. So I have a little bit left to do here but by and large it's done. We've got the conveyors set up for our 40 arc furnaces and the same thing. It's set up to receive uh, specific ores or we'll be able to select specific ores to feed into the arc furnaces that will then be pulled out when they're done as ingots uh, and back into the conveyor system where its only option will be to go into storage because everything else will be blocked off by conveyor sorters acting as one-way valves. So that's kind of the thing. Then we've added our oxygen generators. We've got a handful of these because <laughs> you never know when you're going to need more oxygen. We've got a total of 10. Or did we do 20? We may have done... We did 20. We did 20 oxygen generators. There's another row in the back. So, total of 20 oxygen generators. Again, connected to the conveyor system. Only this time, it's a one-way trip. There's uh, stuff going in and nothing coming out. At least, not by the, uh, the specific conveyor system. You can see we've got a one-way uh, conveyor sorter pulling ice into the uh, conveyor system for the oxygen tanks. And then there's no specific output... Uh, it's just going to the oxygen tanks and the hydrogen tanks, that's it. There's there's nothing that we're receiving as a refined product that we need to store anywhere else. So that's uh, kind of handy and convenient. And that's basically uh, the lower deck. One of the things that I wanted to do was kind of get a, a feel for how high the lower deck needed to be so that all of the tubing could fit in without having to have anything cramped or kind of running around where we didn't want it to go. So once we get the rest of the plumbing in, for the refineries, that should be good. We still need to put in assemblers. We're gonna have uh, probably in the neighborhood of 10 assemblers because again, I would rather have one assembler for a specific kind of thing uh, and then use a second assembler if I need a second thing then have one assembler with a queue that has two items and we have to choose which gets made at any given time. So in this case, the more, the merrier. And that's going to be kind of uh, the, the thing with this build. The recurring theme. There's no kill like overkill. So that's the Atlas. But now we need to talk about what in the blue hell. No wonder this thing hasn't been working. It's bent. <laughs> At least it looks. It is. The damn thing is bent. I wanted something nice and level, and this is what I got. It's definitely got a slope to it. This is a temporary track that I built for testing of the uh, the the thing that you can't see because it's dark. It always, always nighttime. As soon as I'm ready to start recording, the sun goes down. It's freakish, but temporary track uh, that will mimic in some ways the track that's going to be on either side of the atlas and the whole idea is if you picture like a, a gondola or a train car of some sort only the track is suspended above the car that's kind of what we're going for and I've been messing around with 
Uh, <laughs> this is just craziness. And I don't mind the crazy. Uh, the only thing is it's, and I think it's probably related to the, the slant on this son of a bitch. Uh, it, it's not really working so well right now. So uh, the whole idea here is that we're using wheels to both control the motion of the carriage and also to keep it aligned with everything so that it's not slipping off tracks or doing anything else. That's why we've got so many different wheels in so many different places. Is the whole idea is these large wheels on top are providing the propulsion and then these wheels here and these wheels here are uh, helping to keep it aligned top to bottom so that it stays nice and level. If the drills are kicking, you know, if they, they tend to kind of buck a little bit from time to time, the wheels will be able to absorb some of that instead of just having everything fly to pieces and then keep pushing the, the, the wheels back down into their proper position. These upper wheels, uh, because there's two sets of them, help keep it controlled from side to side. So if you imagine you have uh, the track running in between these two upper wheels, the two wheels uh, are pressed up against it and providing the uh, propulsion. I mean, here's some footage of what it looks like when it is kind of working in a slightly different wheel configuration, just so you can get the basic idea. The difficulty is that unless I have everything set up so that the wheels are barely touching the beams and the thrusters are turned on, it doesn't move. And, and I'm thinking now, now that I've had a chance to step back and see what this looks like, thinking that might have something to do with it is, uh, it's just on a great big dumbass slant. So the goal is going to be to adjust the configuration of these wheels, uh, not just the settings in the, con in the settings menu, but also their position, uh, where they are relative to one another, where they are relative to the track, so that we can get the thing set up and the wheels basically turned on and the whole thing will move back and forth on the track all by itself with no input from us. That's the goal. Now, one of the ways that it's going to do that is with these little sensors down here, which are already set up so that if there's nothing uh, directly above them for a certain distance, they toggle. And then if something appears directly above them again, then they toggle again so that you get this uh, constant sensor activity whenever the, the end of the carriage goes past the end of the track so that you can reverse the direction of the wheels and have it go the other way. The only thing that's left to navigate after we get all that... Look at this mess. I can't... I have to... Look. From the testing that I was doing with this thing, it's just deformed all to hell. What, what a disaster. The only thing that I have left to figure out once we get the carriage on the track and working the way we expect it to is how to move the track up and down in a way that makes sense that's not labor intensive in between movements of the vehicle uh, and that allows us to go as deep as we can imagine ideally uh, as simply as possible and safely because we don't want accidents causing the carriage to for example fall off the track or the track to fall off the atlas or any of the other <laughs> there's so many things that can go wrong and only one outcome that you would consider to be right it's just the way these things work, which is half the fun. But you get the idea that there's, there's a certain amount of work involved getting everything tuned and ready to go. So the next episode, we're going to have a working version of the carriage on the track. You're going to see it moving back and forth. We're also going to be talking a little bit about whatever system we've come up with to uh, move the track up and down on the Atlas. And also, you might notice down here on the underside, we've got a large storage container. This is going to be what's storing the ores as the drills pull them up because this guy is going to be moving it's not going to have a direct connection to the the atlas so we can't just pass all of the ores all the way across what we need to be able to do is accumulate ores in this container and then pass it along to the the larger ship the the proper storage uh whenever we're nearby a, a certain connector or something like that we'll figure out a way to make that work but the whole idea is to have this system set up so that we can cover as much area as possible when we're mining so we have to do fewer moves of the vehicle because what we know for sure is that moving the vehicle tends to disrupt things like pistons and rotors so we want to get the vehicle stationary we want to get the vehicle drilling and we want to leave it there and get as much as we can 
before we have to move it. So that's that's basically what I've been working on. Most of my efforts have been uh, aimed at getting this thing tuned and experimenting with different uh, setups. We're getting closer every time. The simpler, the better. And I think the next iteration is going to hopefully be uh, not only fewer wheels, uh, but maybe even fewer segments of the great big slanty ass track. So if, if you turn just the right way, it looks straight, doesn't it? But then you, you turn it the way that it's supposed to be and all of a sudden it's, uh, it's crap. It's absolute crap. And it's good that it's dark that we can't see the crap that we made because that would sort of explain why we're having so many difficulties. So if you want to be notified when I add the next episode with the updated carriage, with the uh, plan for the track, and with uh, probably some more work done on the Atlas, you can always subscribe to my channel, get a notice that way. You can also follow me on social media. Links for social media are in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.